is Mark Holman and welcome to another episode of Keeping You in the Know. So today's topic with our guru Mark is about polybutylene piping and we wanted to share with you a little bit about what that is and what you need to be aware of when you're buying a home or as a homeowner. So talk with us about polybutylene piping, Mark. Well, it's a gray pipe and typically if it has lettering stamped on it, it's going to have a PB for polybutylene on it. So that's a dead giveaway that that's what we're talking about because some of them look the same. Some pecs look similar to polybutylene, but basically it was water piping, plumbing piping. that was real common in the, uh, let's see, it'd been the eighties and early nineties. And it was very good. I mean, it came out and it was different iterations of it. They had uh, the piping with uh, plastic crimp rings, uh, with copper crimp rings, and they started having issues with different configurations. And you know, by now you would think that it's all leaking everywhere, but we still run into it quite a bit, and it's perfectly fine. But you want to know whether you have it or not. And so, on your residential property disclosure, typically it asks you what type of piping you have in your house. And if you don't know, the best way to do it is just look in your crawl space or underneath your sink and see if you see the piping. Like I say, it's gonna be gray in color. It typically has the PB on it to indicate that it's polybutylene. And uh, that's pretty much it. So let me ask you this. If a buyer is considering a home, and let's just say it was built in 1989, we would advise them, you know, there's a possibility there's polybutylene in this home. And let's say they discover, yes, there is polybutylene. What would be your recommendation? Should they move forward with that house and buy it or should they not? Well, like in this day and age, I mean, typically a lot of the plumbing pipes only last for, they're rated for 25 years anyway, so we're way past that for polybutylene. So, I mean, you would think that it had totally failed by now, and like I say, I have it in my house. So, I mean, it's, we've got it everywhere. Um, the main thing to do would be to have it inspected, you know, have it inspected by your home inspector, and if you wanted further evaluation, uh, have a plumber look at it. They, they run into it all the time. and. You know, to change it out, it shouldn't be really, uh, you know, a deal stopper or anything. Well, we've seen um, pricing on getting all the polybutylene replaced with um, new new plumbing, and a lot of the expense comes in because there's sheetrock repair that needs to be done, and the bathrooms there might be tile surrounds that need to be re redone. Um, so it's a pretty significant job, but I've seen pricing to replace all the polybutylene in the house for as low as three thousand dollars and to uh, as much as ten thousand dollars. And it's all about access. If they can get to it, if you can get to it all from the crawl space, all your main lines. I mean, it's very, it's not, it's not really expensive at all. And we have issues with pecs. We have issues with copper, just as much as there's issues with polybutylene. So PVC piping, they all have some type of issues. So. You know, it's really just to get a, best thing to do is just get an inspection, let the home inspector just tell you what he finds, and then if it needs to be further evaluated, just have a plumber look at it and see what's going on. So there's also the question of if it has polybutylene fittings versus um, copper fittings, is there a difference? Is one better than the other? Yeah, the, the polybutylene, when they went to like the copper fittings, kind of seemed to calm things down. I think the original issue was polybutylene with plastic crimps, which was a, a recipe for disaster because you know, the plastic couldn't hold it. But it seems like when they went to, there were different kinds of fittings, they had all different kinds of metal fittings, but when they went to the copper, it seemed like a lot of the issues kind of stopped. And then there were issues where they said, you know, sun exposure, if the piping was left outside while a construction interval was going on, it was exposed to sunlight, all kinds of things. So, you know, there are class action lawsuits about it and all, but it's been a long time now since all that happened and there's still quite a bit out there. So it's something just to be aware of and to get it inspected. And a lot of the class action lawsuits happened at about the 15 year mark. That seemed to be when there was a big peak in failure. So it does almost make you wonder if it's made it past that 15 year mark and still hasn't failed. Maybe, it, maybe it's okay at this point. I mean, again, like Mark says, you want to have it inspected. That's case by case, but there is some some thought that that might be the case um, and on, on a macro scale. Yeah, plastic fittings, metal fittings, water interacts with metal fittings and water, water's different everywhere, different mineral content, higher levels of chlorine, all kinds of factors and with metal fittings, metal crimps, plastic fittings, plastic crimps and if you look at the way they're doing PECs now, they're back to pecs with plastic fittings and metal rings. So I mean, it's all kind of like gone, gone full circle. Full circle. So. 
So a question we get asked a lot as well regarding polybutylene by sellers is, is this something that we have to disclose? And unless you're a licensed real estate agent, as a seller, you do not have to disclose. You can put no representation. But our recommendation is go ahead and disclose if you have polybutylene. It's better to just um, be very transparent about these kinds of things and let the buyer know up front because if that's a deal breaker for a buyer, you don't want to um, you don't want to have them go take you take your house off the market for several weeks and then they back out and there's a lot of conflict. It's better just to disclose it up front and handle it up front. So um, you're not required, but we do think it's a, a good idea. So sounds good. All right. Well, thank you for um, joining us for another episode of Keeping You in the Know.